This podcast is brought to you by Knowledge at Wharton. Welcome to Knowledge at Wharton. I'm Angie Bassiuni. I'm here with one of my favorite guests, marketing professor Jonah Berger. He's here to talk to us about his latest research on storytelling. His co-authored paper is titled, Seeing Your Life's Story as a Hero's Journey Can Increase Meaning in Life. And it's all about how people can find uh, more well-being and more resilience if they make themselves the hero of their own story. Jonah, thanks for coming back. Thanks so much for having me. So let's get into this. Uh, In your paper, you have this great quote that says, people's minds are made for narratives. I love that. I think it explains why we all love a good story, a good biopic. Explain what this research is about. Yeah. So first, it might be worth talking about what a hero's journey is, right? So if you've ever watched a famous movie like Star Wars or Harry Potter, you're probably familiar with this old idea of a hero's journey, which is there's some sort of protagonist. Maybe it's Luke Skywalker. Maybe it's Harry Potter. Maybe it's someone else. uh, And they go through a journey to reach some sort of outcome at the end right? Um, There's a shift in their lives, uh, things start ordinary, and then suddenly they become extraordinary. They go on a quest, they meet Mm -hmm. allies or friends along the way. Think about Yoda or Hermione and and others. They deal with some challenge. There's some foe or enemy they must overcome. They undergo some transformation where they change and and eventually they sort of have a, a positive outcome at the end. And so things like A Hero's Journey make stories really engaging, right? They make Mm -hmm. movies fun to watch. They make books fun to read. But we wondered, okay, beyond these things for entertainment value, beyond the value of A Hero's Journey for sort of being engaging, could using A Hero's Journey and the way we talk about our own lives actually make us better off? Well, how did you go about studying this? So so we did a number of things. So, So first, really tried to quantify what The Hero's Journey is. Uh, we looked at a variety of types of stories and content to sort of figure out what the key dimensions are. And, and there's some of the things I talked about before, right? There, there needs to be a protagonist, that proverbial sort of hero in that hero's journey. There needs to be some sort of shift, right, of going from daily life and ordinary things to something more unusual uh, happening. There needs to be some sort of quest or goal. Uh, and along the way, they need to overcome something. There need to be some sort of barriers or challenges, whether they may be a villain or connecting with someone else or creative problem solving. Often they meet allies along the way that they connect with. Often there's some sort of transformation and there's some sort of positive outcome at the end. And so we started by figuring out what these key dimensions are, looking at a lot of different stories and a lot of different contexts. Um, and then we said, okay, given we understand what hero's journeys are, now can we use these journeys to, to help people? And so we started by looking at just uh, a natural study of existing stories and and meaning in life. We looked at hundreds uh, of different people uh, and we measured both how they saw their lives. We asked them to write sort of the story of their lives and we measured this dimension of of a hero's journey. Did they tend to see their lives as a hero's journey or not? Um, And then we looked at how meaningful uh, they saw their lives, looking back on sort of what they had done so far, uh, what they had overcome, uh, either in their personal or professional lives, how much meaning they saw in those in those personal professional uh, lives. And what we found, sure enough, is that seeing one's life as a hero's journey was related to seeing it as more meaningful. People who had more of these things in the way they saw their lives, the, the way they talked about their stories had more allies and challenges and quests and sort of overcoming these barriers to reach positive outcomes. They tended to see their lives as, as more meaningful. Now, that by itself is interesting, right? Mm-hmm. But it's not enough. Maybe people who tend to see their lives as a hero's journey naturally see their lives as more meaningful, but it's it's not that the hero's journey made them see their lives as more meaningful. They're just certain types of people that tend to do both. And so we wondered, okay, could we encourage people to see their lives as a hero's journey and in so doing, help them make their own lives seem more meaningful? And so what we did there is we prompted people to reflect on important elements of their lives and connect them into a compelling and coherent narrative. We gave them this idea of a hero's journey and encouraged them to see their lives along those lines. And what we found is sure enough, doing that for one set of people made them see their lives as more meaningful. Taking the same life that you may have had, but organizing it in that way, rather than seeing it as sort of a a random set of things that occurred over time, really seeing it as a hero's journey made one's life more more meaningful. And, And that can be both in our personal or professional lives, right? Seeing your work life, seeing your resume, for example, not just as a, a bunch of different jobs over time, but thinking about, okay, what's the what's the journey you've been on? What are some of the challenges you've had to overcome? What is that quest or goal you're hoping to achieve? 
Who are some of the allies that you've met along the way? How have you been tri- transformed by that process? All of those characteristics that make Hero's Journey so engaging to listen to as stories also help make our own journeys seem more meaningful. And they also help us be more resilient as well. Folks that were encouraged to see one's life as a hero's journey uh, or one's uh, work life as a hero's journey, it ended up making them more resilient uh, as well. And so I think this has some important implications both for our our personal and, and our professional lives. Tell me what the biggest takeaway from this research is. When I'm listening to you talk, I almost feel like there's a component of self-confidence uh, that comes along when you rewrite or shame, frame, frame shift your own narrative. Instead of going, oh, I, I had this problem and I couldn't solve it, you can think about all the ways that you met that challenge and how you either overcame it or you know, you're like, oh, next time I'll do better. I, I've learned these things. So it can help build your self-confidence. So talk about what's the biggest takeaway for folks in this research. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is this, you know, our lives are what our lives are. Uh, Mm -hmm. Our work journeys, our work experiences have been what what they are. Uh, And so we can't change what they've been, but we can change how we see them, right? We can change how we organize them. We can change how we think about them. Um, Most of us really are on a journey, right? There have been things we've done along the way, but we had some sort of vision of who we hope to be. and, And maybe we've gotten there. Maybe we've changed that vision. But we, we have been on a journey. And so seeing our lives as that journey, organizing it in that way, recognizing those challenges that we've overcome, those, those barriers that we've dealt with, the ways that we've been transformed, the, the goals that we had and, and how we've achieved them, seeing our lives in, in that way can impact how we feel and, and how we resilient we, we are. And so stories aren't just fun and interesting and engaging. They also have important implications for how we see ourselves and, and how we may perform in the future. So this research really does fit squarely into social psychology, but can you translate for us uh, the business context? How can people use this information in a business context? Yeah. So um, uh, I'll start with a, a couple uh, examples and then I'll get to one that's close to my own heart, which is which is marketing. So um, first, just from a personal well-being standpoint, right, seeing our lives as these journeys can have a, a beneficial impact, right? They can help us see our own lives uh, as, as more meaningful. I think secondly, though, right, we should think about how we pitch ourselves, how we tell our own stories. And, and there's been a lot of interest in the, in the past few years in the idea of narratives and telling our story um, uh, with the, the advent and sort of growth of social media. More people are online dripping details of their life out on a moment to moment or daily or weekly or, or monthly basis. But in, in dripping out those moments and in, in talking about what's happening to us, we have the ability to shape that narrative both when we right. post on social media, but also when we go in for an interview, for, for example. What should we talk about? How should we frame our experience? And, and how might the way we tell our story shape how we are perceived? And, and so I think this, this work has some important implications for, for those types of questions, right? When we're in an interview and someone asks us about our work experience, not just saying, well, I worked here and there and this other place, but really talking about it as a journey. Right? Helping the, the listener see, well, what quest were we on? What did we overcome? What challenges did we deal with? How have we been transformed by that process? Organizing in that coherent uh, and, and engaging narrative will not only be fun to listen to, but will increase our, our likelihood of, of getting that job. And then in terms of marketing, you know, it, it's interesting. Marketers are also telling narratives and products and services often feature heavily in those narratives, right? Products and services help consumers solve problems and, and achieve their goals. But there are different ways companies can talk about the role of products and services in those narratives. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was working with a large multinational uh, consumer packaged goods company. Uh, and they had a campaign where um, uh, people could buy their product and be entered in a chance to win a college scholarship. So it was sort of uh, in, de- in the developing world. Uh, it was very hard for many individuals to, to get the money to go to college. Um, and this program gave people an opportunity through essentially a, a lottery or a raffle. Uh, if you bought the product, you were entered in this thing and you could have an opportunity to go to college. Now, this program is a great program doing a lot of social good, but it wasn't getting a lot of positive attention. It wasn't getting a lot of word of mouth. People weren't talking about it a lot. And so the company reached out and said, hey, how can we get more earned media for what we're doing? How can we help this program have more impact? And and one thing we did is we analyzed this program in terms of of a hero's journey. And what we realized is the hero of that story was the company. Right? There was a consumer. The consumer had a problem. Right, There was, a, uh, in some sense, a challenge they wanted to overcome. They wanted to get more educated. Um, and the company was the hero. By buying the company's product, the consumer could uh, have a positive outcome. 
But here's the problem. If the company's the hero, that makes the company look pretty good, but it doesn't really make people want to talk about it that much, right? The couple people that win, yeah, they were very excited and told others, but a whole bunch of people lost. Most people didn't win the prize, right? And so how could we get them more engaged? And what we realized is, well, a better story isn't a story where the product or service is the hero, but whether the consumer or customer is the hero, right? That's a much more engaging story where they're more likely to be a part. Um, and so rather than making sort of the, the company, the, the hero, if you will, the, the sword that slays the dragon uh, in this hero story, what we realized is, hey, wait a second, actually the, the customer is the hero, right? By voting on which individual should get the opportunity to go based on their story or helping people in their community get upvoted to have more of a chance to win this prize, they can now participate. They have a role in this narrative and yes, the company's still there, right? The company is helping, but the consumer is enabling this dragon to be slayed by, by leveraging this program the company has. And so by seeing that program as more of a hero's journey, we enabled it to be more effective overall by, by reconceptualizing the, the way it was expressed. And you're actually pulling the audience or the consumer into the story, into the hero's journey and making them a part of it, which would ultimately make it more effective for the marketing team. Certainly, right? I mean, I, yeah. I think we often have to think of who is a hero in the hero's journey and who is right. the villain, right? There needs to be a hero and there needs to be a villain. That's that's often what these journeys have or a challenge. It doesn't have to be a villain. Um, but what role should the product or service or different individuals play in that, in that journey, right? Allies serve a nice role because they can be helpful. And so maybe it's better rather than the company being the hero that, that overcomes the challenge, which is a neat story, but doesn't really feature me as the consumer. Maybe now, hold on, I'm the hero in my own journey. I want to overcome my own personal challenge. And the company is the ally or the tool that, that helps me get there. When you were speaking earlier about uh, management and interviewing techniques, it made me think about these very common interviewing questions when people go to apply for a job and, and you're often asked, tell me about a problem that you solved at work or tell me how you get along with other people or you your conflict resolution skills. So I think if you if if you think about your your hero's journey story, you can sort of come up with better answers during an interview. Yeah, and, and rather than the, the answer seeming like individual examples of things that don't fit together, mm -hmm. you can make it more of a common whole, right? What is the story you want to tell about yourself? Right? What, what is the hero's journey you're on? What is the transformation you've already uh, had? And what's the quest you'd like to be on in the future? Right? And how does this new role help you in that journey? And, and the more rather than, oh, you know, here's a thing that happened to me, the more it's part of a cohesive narrative that showcases how you've overcome things in the past and been transformed and how you're likely to do that in the future, the more engaging it will be for the audience and, and the more impactful it will be as well. That's what we're all about. Thank you for being here, Jonah. Thanks for having me. All right. His study again is titled, Seeing Your Life Story as a Hero's Journey Increases Meaning in Life. It appears in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. If you enjoyed this conversation, we invite you to check out more of our content on our website. Just type Knowledge at Wharton into your search bar. I'm Angie Bassiuni. Thanks for listening. For more insight from Knowledge at Wharton, please visit knowledge.wharton.upenn.edu.